So is there a bigger picture the Springbok coaches are working on or is it time for the Springbok coaches and Springbok fans to start panicking? Meanwhile, Australia are looking very good on their road to the 2023 Rugby World Cup in France. So in this video, I'd like to discuss what went right for Australia, what went wrong for the Springboks and my closing remarks. So first of all, congratulations to the Wallabies for beating the Springboks after receiving that hiding from Australia two weeks ago. I think the Wallabies, they played a very good game. To win the Springboks, you need to have a, a very good start. And we see that Australia, they had a very good start by scoring their first try within the first minute of the game. I must say that the Springboks, they did it to themselves. They weren't able to gather the kickoff ball, which Australia won in the air. And that led for the box to be under pressure and Australia scoring the opening try. So in my preview of this game, for those who watched my preview, I predicted that Australia will win the Springboks. One of the reasons I gave was if Australia had the ability to keep possession in long phases, then that will increase the probability of them winning the Springboks. And in the opening couple of moments of this game, Australia, they just did that. They applied pressure on the Springboks and the box in the first quarter of the game they had no answer for the pressure being applied by the Wallabies. And the ability for the Wallabies to, to be on par at the breakdown helped them to keep ball, to keep position. And if you can do that against the Springbok team, then this match for yourself will be much, much easier. So the Australian fans, they should be proud of their team. Their team did well and everything is looking good for Australia. Going into the next test match against the Springboks, where I don't see the box doing much better. I'll be very surprised if the Springboks win the second test as well. So let's cover the Springbok team performance. So with the Australian starting very well, that meant obviously the Springboks started very poorly. So there's this pattern emerging that when you start well against the Springboks and even against the Orbit as well, when you start well against these teams, Springboks especially, then the chance of you winning the game, it increases tenfold. Because a team at the Springboks, they don't like chasing games. They don't like being behind. They always like to be on the front foot. And if you start very well against like the Springboks, then your chance increase. And I can see teams have identified that. And that's why it's important for teams, if they, if they want to win, they need to start very well. And I can foresee teams from the Northern Hemisphere, they will do the same thing come November. With, if it's the Irish, they always aim to start well, to score the first try, or minimum to score the first penalty. So the Springboks are renowned for their very good defense. Um, I would say if you talk about defense, you talk about the Springboks recently. However, since last year, and even now again today, Australia have the ability to unlock the Springbok defense very easily. The tries Australia scored were very good tries, and it's just worrying how easily Australia unlock the supposedly best defense in the world. Now the Springboks had a very bad start in the beginning, however, from the 10th minute onwards, you could see that the Springboks, they started to take control of this game. The Springboks, the forwards came in more prominent in the game. The set piece was an element that the Springboks used as a base to work from. And we see that the box were very efficient in the, in the scrums. They were good at line-out time. And you could see from the 10 minute onwards, how the box got more position, they got more territory. Unfortunately, they couldn't convert the pressure the position, the territory into points. With the Springboks forward pack being one of the best in the world, it's difficult and very frustrating to see how the Springboks backline, backline is operating. I would say the forward Springboks pack is the most efficient in world rugby. It's just for the box to evolve into a great team, they need to look at their backline play. Either the guys currently they're doing the backline coaching, they're not doing a very good job. Or the Springboks, they need to bring in some sort of consultant that can help them and assist them with the backline play. Like Jack White did in 2017 when he brought in Eddie, Eddie Jones to help with the Springboks attacking play. And the box need that because what I saw in today's game, it was putrid, there was no cohesion, there was no strategy being shown, even though the backline plays of South Africa are some of the best there is in the world. However, coming from 
a strategic point of view, you can see that you're lacking something and if they can just tweak that and fix that, then I think this Springbok team can, from a good team can become a very great team. So, so Springbok players who had a poor game, I would say Andre Pollard had a putrid game, missing the first two penalty kicks. His general play wasn't that good and on Twitter I noticed some people said if that was Elton Yelt Yankees playing like that, then Springbok Twitter would have had a meltdown. However, Andre Pollard, he needs to pull up his socks because he was very poor today. Joseph Dweba, um, phew, the guy got another chance to prove himself. Unfortunately, didn't do too well for himself. He threw in the first attacking line out, he threw in skew, and that was a good opportunity for the Springboks to attack Australia. However, his line out wasn't, was, was skew. Uh, Dweba he went off for a cut. Malcolm Marsh came on. I didn't thought Dweba would be substituted for the whole game. Luckily for him, he came on later in the first half to play a little bit part of the game and then obviously went off in the second half when Malcolm Moss came on. The Springbok lose trio of Sia Kulisi, Dwayne Vermeulen and Peter Seftertoid, they were MIA in this game, especially Peter Seftertoid and Dwayne Vermeulen. Now Peter Seftertoid he is playing in Japan currently and in my opinion I'm thinking that any Prima player who's playing his club back in Japan should not get a head start from players playing locally and when I mean locally I'm meaning now URC or even in the Premiership or in France because the, the intensity, the tempo in Japan is much slower than what it is in Europe. So the best of the toy, he is a shadow of his former self. Twin from Yellen, he had one or two good things he did, but in general, he wasn't that great. So I think the Prima coaches, they, they need to look at this, especially the number eight position, um, Twin from Yellen. I think he can be in the team, but more in a mold of helping the younger guys, giving them pointers, being there for them being a shoulder for them to, to lean on, you know. But I don't think Twin from Yellen, he should start in his Primal jersey going into next year's World Cup. Walik Galand, he tried his best as well. I think Walik Galand is a, a player that operates on a different plane. So the guys that was next to him, they weren't on his wavelength. So for a guy like Walik Galand, it takes time to get used to his running lines, when he's gonna pass the ball. And we've seen that as the year season went on, in the previous, uh, with the Stormers, we've seen how the guys playing, playing Mr. Wijkalan, they could read his movements and work off him. So, I would hope that the Prima coaches keep Wijkalan in the team. I would hope that they endure with him to build cohesion because if Wijkalan clicks, then he can be someone that can ignite the Springbok backline. Then Franz Stein, I do not know why Franz Stein is still in the Springbok team. 2019, he was a very useful player to have in the squad. 2020, 2022, I don't think Franz Stein should be wearing a Springbok jersey. The guy has barely played any rugby for the past couple of months. He hasn't played any top class rugby. The only rugby he's played recently was with the Cheetahs in Curry Cup. So I don't know why Franz Stein is still there. I would think that a youngster like Kanan Moody be brought in in the next game. Hopefully for him to spark some life into the Springboks. So my closing remarks. So this was a very disappointing game from my Springbok point of view. So if you are an Australian supporter, it must have been a very satisfying victory for your team. So Australia, they're on the right path. I think having a guy like um, Dave Rennie there. Dave Rennie is a very good coach. Australia, they are on the right path. They are turned into a team that can match other teams physically. They have exciting running backs. The loose trio seems to be very good and decent. So Australia, they are a decent team. But my question is, is Australia a contender for next year's World Cup in France? That is one of the questions I'm asking. Is Australia a contender for next year's World Cup in France? From my Springbok point of view, if I look at if I look for positives, there are a couple of things I noticed from the Springboks in the attack, especially the short passes between the forwards. I think that's probably something that the Springbok coaches and the team are working on to evolve the game. They should keep on with that. If they can master that part of the game, the short passes between the forwards, if they can master that game, then that will be a very good evolving uh, strategy from a Springbok point of view. So I hope they, they continue with that. But in general, the Springbok defense needs some serious work. They need to sort out their backline attacking play. And I think the Springbok coaches, they are aware of the 
the shortcomings. So if the Springboks loses the next test match against Australia, then Jacques Dinaba is under serious pressure. I think he will be under serious pressure. I don't foresee them firing the guy. I don't foresee that happening. There's too much there's too much stuff placed on this current Springbok coaching ticket. I don't see them removing him. However, Jacques Dinaba and his coaching staff will be under serious pressure if they lose the next test match. So guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this morning's game. I know if you are a Primo supporter, you might feel disappointed. So, what do you think of the game this morning? Can the box improve? Can, will the box win next week? Can they come back from the disappointing loss? I think they have to come back from the disappointing loss. So guys, thank you for watching this video. I want to hear from you guys. Let's chat, let's talk, let's interact. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I'll catch you guys on my next video.